the last year, uh, there were multiple focus groups with different parts of um, the agency participated, and they were in consultation to you know share their concerns, their hopes, their ideas, their visions, and to give us feedback about how the agency um, is doing and where do we see the agency going. Through those consultations, um, the agency has had a plan for the next five years, and today. Uh, we are here to share with you the results of those consultation sessions with a new vision and a new mission and most importantly with a new and clear plan to how we're going to get there. And in order to do that, um, Denise is here to sort of share uh, what has come and now you'll be aware of what the future planning for the agency will be. Okay, so welcome back and let me introduce you to Denise Luber, Executive Director. Thank you. So I want to talk just very briefly about a few updates in the agency. So let's look at the agenda. But I want to start with just a few little updates for you here. I, I started this morning by saying that there's always in these kinds of situations an elephant in the room. You know what I mean by that? Okay. What are you all waiting really to hear from me about? Money, right? <laughs> money, money, money. And I absolutely understand that. I have uh, endeavored to let you know, as I know, about the rollout of the dollars that we've all heard about, read about, and been at meetings about. I, for our agency, have been involved with discussion with the ministry a number of times, even in this past week, to figure that part out. We need to wait to hear what our allocation, how much is Community Living Cambridge going to get? And then once we have that, we're able to figure out how that gets distributed. As soon as we know that, I, I commit to you that we'll let you know. Okay, so we're not holding back any information. We had a, a second meeting, um, telephone meeting yesterday, and we hope to hear, originally they indicated, they being the ministry indicated February 1, but because there's been a lot of back and forth, back and forth with um, the sector, it's going to be just a little bit later. So I can't tell you the date, but I can tell you that it's actively being worked on, okay? So I want you to know that. The other thing I want to touch on is, have you heard that we've opened another group home? No? Okay. Well, we haven't. <laughs> just to be clear. We uh, had a group home at Churchill, on Churchill Avenue, which housed three men. This group home has uh, served our needs for many, many years, but the gentlemen who live there, they're aging, and the staircase there is really steep, and the, it, it's, it was no longer meeting the needs of these people. We were able to connect with a private citizen who was willing to purchase a home that met our needs, which is a bungalow and then with working with us to retrofit this home to meet the needs of compliance for a group home. It's a beautiful home, a bungalow, lots of space, including we, were able to, we are able to bring in a fourth person into that home, so we're doing some internal moves with that. So I wanted to share that with you. We will be having an open house at some time in the near future, so I hope that you can stop by and see the house. It's beautiful, beautiful. I also wanted you to know because when you hear either that we've opened a new group home, you can say, no, we didn't. And if you hear that we closed a group home, you can also say, no, we didn't. Okay, all we did was relocate. It would be like you deciding to sell your home for something that was better suited to your needs. You still have a home, you're just in a different address. Churchill, the house though, we are gonna keep and it's going to be used um, for some of the people that we support through our SIL program. So people will be renting it and um, living in it like any other townhouse, okay? So that's pretty exciting. Cindy's always working on our IT needs, uh, you know, the computers, etc. And she tells me that we are getting closer and closer that each staff member of Community Living Cambridge will have a CL email address and that we'll be able to use that for communication two ways, for email blasts of information, etc. So Cindy, as that does happen, she's going to give us all the information about how we do it, where we do it, and, and then why we would do it, okay? So watch for that, we're excited about it. 
Lourdes already touched upon the components of the strategic launch. So you know we did focus groups. A number of you may well have been involved with it. There were over 100 people involved. Through the focus groups, our consultant, Fred Galloway, used the information and developed what is called an environmental scan, which is a compilation of putting together of all of that information, which identifies a, a very good picture of community living Cambridge, what niche it's filling, what needs are being met, and where there are still some gaps. And so with that environmental scan then, we had a planning weekend in the fall with um, all of the board of directors and the directors to now look at this information to develop a working plan for moving forward in the agency, our strategic plan. Through that, we took a look at our mission and vision statement, and we've always had a mission and a vision statement, but I'm not sure how much we actively engaged with our mission and vision and understood it and really understood how it connected with the work we are doing. So this lovely piece up here outlines what our vision is and what we are all about. And just the, if you walked in, you saw the framed print back there, which is this poster. And we, hope, we will be ensuring that each area within the agency receives one of these. And we'll be talking a little more about that. We really want that we become aware of what we are saying we're about, how we're doing it, and that we engage with it. And most importantly, as we move forward with our strategic plan, that everything that we do is measured against this. If we say we're going to do this particular plan, does that line up with this? And if it doesn't, we need to take time to figure it out. Okay? So, let's move forward with that. Our vision. You can just run through this quickly, Teresa. People empowered through opportunities and supports to realize their dreams. The strategic plan that, that we have and that this information is taken from will be posted on our website so you're, you are able to read it in its entirety. These are pieces, little tidbits from that that I wanted to share with you. But our vision, rather than just being some very pretty and possibly poetic words, we delved into what we're saying with them. So people are people empowered that everybody has a community, okay? And in order to have a community, they need to be able to function as full citizens. Through opportunities and supports, the vehicle of how we're going to empower them, how we're going to support them to be full citizens. To realize their dreams, well, this one we know a little bit more because we've been doing the personal plans, which include the dreams. But our vision is that each person, each person that we support, regardless of their ability, they need the opportunities to create their dreams and hopes. And that's part of our job, right? To build those opportunities for them. Now our mission, and again, Teresa, if you can run through that. Journeying together, we create opportunities to support people with developmental disabilities, to realize their citizenship and aspirations. So it's more than just a support service. The vision piece, that is about the people we serve, right? The mission piece, that's about how we're going to do it. So the vision is to see why we're doing it. The mission is how we're going to do it, okay? And so it's more than just the support service. And it involves us engaging with people in building their life track, right? So it isn't about that we're working here and this is part of our life track and our life journey, but we're here our job is to support them. We create opportunities. We need to be adaptive and creative. We're enablers, facilitators, coordinators, cheerleaders. 
That's all part of our jobs. What one of the areas with that, as we did the strategic plan, we were clear all the way through, is that everything we do is about the people first. It's all centered around them. We need to put their needs first, and beyond engaging them, we also engage family and friends, pair partners, community networks. And we do this to unify so that with all of the combined resources, we're able to offer each person the best support, or like the rungs of a ladder, okay? We build the rungs that they can climb up to whatever level they are able to. Does that sound like what you do? Is that your understanding? Yeah, like it's not like this is new. It's not like we're doing a turn in midstream. It's rather that we are digging down more into the very reason for our existence. So when we took a look with the board and with the directors at what the principles and values are, as I said, people first. First priority, fully accepted. Choice, that they have meaningful choice in their lives. Meaningful. Meaningful for whom? For them. Not for us, but for them. Dignity. I mean, that's a basic tenet of what our belief is. That is not new for our agency. Citizenship. That each person's citizenship is the right to be in the community, to claim the place that is ours. We do that. That is our intention for each of the people that we support. Engagement, that we want to actively ask for and listen to what people are saying to us. And sometimes that's a little bit of a, like, ouch, you know, especially you want to hear, you're doing a great job, you're doing exactly what I want, you want to hear families that say you are the best thing that has ever happened to us. I like to hear that too. And we do hear that. But occasionally we also hear, why aren't you doing this kind of a thing? Why aren't you helping in this way? Why do you do this? It doesn't make sense. And those kinds of things, it's really easy to get our backs up a little bit. So we have to feel comfortable with evaluating not only for ourselves, but hearing what other people have to say. We want to engage. We want a culture that that inspires people, you folks, to be creative, to think of new ways, to think outside the box. We, we really understand that collectively we are much stronger when we utilize all of the resources. I used a comparator this morning. If today we were moving Churchill, and it was simply Liz, Cindy, Lourdes, and I moving Churchill. It would take a while. But if I asked all of you, could we go over to Churchill? Can you give me two hours of your time? Can we all pitch in? How long will it take us to actually move that house? When I say move, I don't mean the foundation. I mean pack it up and get it moved out. Obviously, it's going to be faster, right? And if one of you has a friend who has a moving truck, bonus! So together we're much stronger, and we need that. So that's the kind of culture we want. We already are trying to establish that in a new number of areas, and we want to continue to grow that. Accountability. We want to answer for what we're doing. We want to be able to explain why we're doing something, and Perhaps more importantly, when we realize that what we're doing either isn't the best path or doesn't make sense or perhaps is a mistake, that we acknowledge that and move on. So, you know, we recognize that we try always to do our very best. We need to leave room for the, the places that we can be better. So we want to answer for our decisions. Now, in all of this, you know, as we're planning for our own dreams and hopes and, and that, perhaps you want to buy a really, really expensive car. I assume that's not one of my Fords, but anyway, 
If you want to buy an expensive car or house or have a really elaborate vacation, you can have that dream. There's no problem with that. You can even build a plan towards that dream. Good for you. But if you don't have the resources to manage that dream, all you do is put yourself behind the eight ball, whether because you've taken out a loan or you've walked away from your responsibilities. So any decisions that you make or I make, we need to make that are sustainable, that by making them, we don't put into jeopardy everything else that has happened, that we've built in our life. That's the same for our agency. So there's a commitment to being sustainable. So what the board did, uh, and what we all did, is we identified three primary directions that we're going to look at. And once we look at that one, we have a couple more. Transitioning programs through innovation, engaging with community, and optimizing resources. So transitioning programs through innovation, these are some things that we have been doing, and it's Tracy, you just run through and put them up, okay? Um, we've been involved with the passport strategy. Are you all familiar with the passport strategy? Yes, no? Okay, I'll, I'll explain it briefly. If I explain too briefly and, and I kind of just give you a little bit of info, I'm happy to explain further um, either after this meeting or you all know where my office is. My office is in the corner. It's the hot office. And not because I'm there, but it's very hot. So when you come and see me, wear short sleeves, okay? Anyway, SPORT is an initiative by the ministry to um, award contracts, give money to individuals who have a developmental disability who are deemed as being recipients or, or potential recipients. And then these people take this money and actually purchase a service. Okay, and the service can be as very, very, very broad. And so we have developed our STEPS program, which is um, allows people to look at our menu of services and purchase them, pay money, because they're not in our services already. And this allows people then who don't have any kinds of supports to be involved. And with that, we've also expanded our fee-for-service because passport dollars are not the only uh, monies that people get. Sometimes people have private dollars, such as um, they've inherited, okay? Um, they may just come from an independently wealthy family. Um, and by the way, we want to get to know those families, okay? But we have now a range of services that families and individuals can come in and negotiate with us. And because it's a fee-for-service, and it would be above the targeted numbers that we already have, then we can look at how can we accommodate them, and that may uh, allow us to look at what staffing do we need to bring in that we could afford and attach to those things on a contract basis. We have need to look at employment services. That's a huge thrust for the agency, the part of me, well, for the agency, but for the ministry. We're looking at transition, transitional aged youth services, and I want, I'm going to take a minute to elaborate on that. You know, we tend to do everything in acronyms, so this is the TAYs, TAYs, and you'll hear us talk about that. Transitional aged youth are those individuals who are part of the child welfare system, so we would know that under Children's Aid Societies or Family and Children's Services. They are wards of the province. So, transitional age youth are those people who've been in the child welfare system as wards of the province. They have a developmental disability, and unfortunately, they hit their 18th birthday. Now, once they hit their 18th birthday, they can no longer be involved in the child welfare system. In some cases, effectively, they become homeless, quite frankly. And so there's a very large initiative um, from the ministry for places, agencies, to develop programs that will respond to the needs of these TAYs, okay? The interesting thing with them is the people who we have met, and we've been involved with TAYs now for a numbers of years, I'm thinking close to 10, but the, it's ramping up. The number is ramping up as to how many people need support and services. And 
some of their presenting issues are different than ones that we've experienced over the years. Okay? A lot more of street knowledge, a lot more of what we might consider common street behaviors that uh, a lot of teens get involved with. Um, oh, just a little bit of attitude occasionally. Yeah, a lot of attitude. So it's, we recognize that in many cases, the way that we've supported people is not going to work for this group. So we've had to develop some incredibly creative ways to respond. You're going to hear a little bit about that when we talk about Saginaw, and I'll, I'll go back to that in a minute. But we have TAYs throughout um, our residential, um, SIL, ESIL, and in a number of our day programs. That's a way, too, that whenever we're working with that, we develop a budget that we submit to the ministry. So we're going to continue to grow that because the need is great. So we're not looking to get rid of group homes but we are looking to see what are other ways we can offer that kind of residential support. So we're working on that. So, as to the transitioning part. Engaging the community, I touched on a little bit. You can run through them, Teresa. We have a lot to be proud of what we do. We are well respected throughout the the community in most cases. I'm sure each one of us has bumped into a, an odd little quirk, quirky uh, complaint along the way, but we are generally well respected. For TAYs, for example, we are seen not only in the region of Waterloo, but beyond as the leaders in that. Community Living Cambridge has a very rich, rich and positive history. We can be proud of that. We need to build some bridges to connect to people. You know, I mentioned that example that Maybe one of you has a mover friend. Okay, we need to build on those kinds of friendships, not just of you, but within the business community. We need to let people know who we are mostly, where we, they can connect in. So it's a two-way street. What can we offer to you, and what can you offer to us? So there's a commitment to explore that further. We need to use our assets, our resources wisely. We have a lot of assets, a lot of property throughout the city. We don't necessarily have a lot of flowing money, but we do have a lot of property. We need to look at and evaluate, are we using that property well? Are there some properties that we have outgrown or that no longer meet our needs? Some of our properties that we're involved with, and this includes around some of the day programming areas too, they were built a very long time ago, like 40 plus years, and they were built at that time to meet the needs of 40 plus years ago. They may still be meeting our needs, but if not, we also want to look at how we can make an adaptation. So what would better meet our needs and how do we use that asset? Okay. So one of the things that um, the board is going to be very actively involved with is in an asset leveraging group. Okay, that's comprised of some of the business people on the board. Um, it will involve some of the senior directors of the agency to do an evaluation and to look at each of our program areas. Okay, so it's all about sustainability and moving forward. We want to continue to work with our communication with people. We actually want to grow that a little bit more to connect with, the, you, you know, you hear the word stakeholder, and stakeholder is a pretty broad word, but we do want to connect with stakeholders in a more engaged and ongoing way. So our communication strategy. And again, the technology I mentioned, Cindy has been working diligently and uh, to get emails for everybody, share vision. I know you all love share vision, right? I hear it all the time. I get phone calls, thank you so much for bringing share vision to us. <laughs> the fact is, is that technology does, it. I mean, we've been sold a little bit of a bill of goods here. That technology makes your life and my life better. That's not necessarily so, okay? And with all of the technology that's out there around computers, etc., I mean, I almost cry when um, we have to get a new cell phone because I have to learn it all over again, okay? It's work, it's work, it's work. Share vision for us, it is work, 
and I appreciate that. It is also for our purposes of being able to collect the data, to submit the data. We have to report on all kinds of things to be able to justify where are our numbers, um, to be able to utilize that to, to work with the broad range of programs that we have that we can access information in a timely manner. So hopefully as we work with it more and more it will become easier. Um, but we do need to keep up with our technology. Our, our paper writing um, works, but it has limitations, especially the larger that we get. So how are we, can we get there from here? Well, when, you, when I looked at the concept of how we're going to do that, we have to take some time to gauge where we're at and to figure out, ponder where we're wanting to go, and to strategize how we're going to get there. That's the one I'm missing, so you go ahead. When we do any kind of an evaluation, we're looking to understand what are the strengths that we have. We want to recognize the current and the future needs, and this is a not just the individuals, but of all this group of people. And we also need to understand our threats, okay? Where are our enemies? Now I'm being a little graphic and poetic with that, but we need to understand the things that are causing us difficulty. We need to not be afraid of them, but by identifying them, move, move in to find ways to resolve that. Once we do all of that, go ahead, Teresa, and keep going, running through. We need to take time to explore new ideas, so we call forth for new ideas, okay? We want to look and see where is the growth, or I use the picture, where is the fruit in the agency? Because if something's happening there, it's something's working, let's look at it to understand it. If it's something that could benefit in other areas, let's move it along. So it's somewhat taking the opportunity to accentuate the very positive things that are happening. We want to look at where some of our uh, partnerships can be, and, and it doesn't have to be in those somewhat predictable places, but rather it can be in some very creative places. We'll explore that. In the pondering, the last line that's there is, in anything we do, we're going to constantly be pulling ourselves back to, does it line up with our vision and our mission? Because you can have great ideas, but if it pulls us away from the very thing that we're, in, we're supposed to be about, it won't work. And then we strategize. And you'll see this in the strategic plan. We have three different priorities, A, B, and C. A are those things that are the highest priority and need the immediate initiation. And so in that, uh, the board along um, in consultation and, and direction uh, is identifying the A priorities that they want us working on. And so they're picking up one, the asset leveraging, and at this moment, the second one has started with regard to looking at the modernization of employment programs. The B categories are, they're dependent on another objective. It's a little bit of first you have to get this, then you can look at that. So they're important, but they may not be initiated until year two or three, until those A's are taken care of. The C's are the things that I like, it might work, um, however, it's a little bit of icing on the cake, and so thus, that, that will sit until such time that the, the agency itself is able to look at it and it will be dependent upon financial resources at the time and also at the needs because our world is changing really quickly so things we believe today for three years out may be different in three years so we're leaving those things for that time period. Then we'll name who is taking the lead, determine how the progress will be measured, commit to target dates, and hopefully continue with some good communication. 
They'll, this is the, a form you'll see, and this will be uh, the methodology of tracking that the board will be looking at and reviewing. And speaking of how they're going to review it, the strategic plan report card, there will be quarterly reports to the board on the A priorities, and it will cover these areas, the actions, the barriers, the recommendations, revisions, and other key info. There will be a yearly review by the board on the status of all the priorities. So it's not going to be put away and just pulled out in five or seven years to look at and say, well, how do we do with that? It's going to be active and worked with regularly. And then every three years following, there will be a full review of a strategic plan that looks at our relevance, the timeliness of it, and the scope of what's happening within our agency. So, there's some pretty major commitments there. People empowered through opportunities and supports to realize their dreams. That is our vision. That is what we want to hold on to. Some of you were a while back, uh, participated in a, a sharing morning that the Valentine staff shared, and, and I heard such positive and wonderful results that I realized I really do want to build a platform that we can hear about what's happening in other parts of the agency. So it's not that one part is, is you know, most wonderful, etc. But when there are some fun and exciting things happening, I do want to try and share some of that. So the Saginaw Group Home is our newest group home. It is. It was a new group home. It opened last uh, June, I believe. And uh, it was uh, one of only two group homes open and funded through the entire province of Ontario. And it is a group home that targeted TAYs. And again, we were funded because of the work that we have been doing, the, the history that the ministry can look at and say, they're pretty pleased with us. And so we wanted to share, we knew that in setting up the Saginaw home, I said earlier, our, our typical approaches weren't gonna work. So we knew that. So we took a lot of time, uh, both in building the program and then hiring Jane Cushney, who is the manager of the group home, and Jane has hired her team, knowing that we have to uh, approach things a little bit differently. So they're going to share right now, and I'm going to invite them up to do that. Jane?